a better glimpse of this shall we look into Ecclesiastes 8.4 while the scripture comes when God makes us a king he wants us to rule as God's agents he wants us to bring God's order to everything we come into contact with when God makes you a king he wants everything around you to have God's order because God has made you with power. Ecclesiastes 8.4 Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? If you have God, if you know yourself as a king, your word has power. Your word has power to change things. Your word has power to subdue things. Your word has power to stop sicknesses. Your word has power to bring financial provision for you. Because the word of a king has power. And the scriptures say he has not made us only kings. What is the other thing he has made us? He has made us kings and priests. Now who is a priest? We understood a little about who is a king, but who is a priest? Let's turn to Hebrews 5, 1 to 4. Hebrews 5, 1 to 4. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity, and by reason thereof he ought as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins, and no man take this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, and as was Aaron. Now this is a very confusing passage maybe to you, but I will explain it to you. When a man is chosen for priesthood, nobody can say, I will go to such and such a class, I will go to such a school, learn what a priest needs to do, and I will be a priest. In fact, nobody can qualify himself to be a priest. A priest is a person whom God chooses and says, hey, you will be my priest. You cannot say, I will study the word of God, I will go into such a thing and do so many research or study about it and at the end I will be a qualified priest. That doesn't work. No man takes this honor on himself but as God chooses. Now the scripture is very clear, God has chosen you to be a priest. If you are a priest, you have certain advantages and you have certain responsibilities. What is the advantage? When you are a priest, you have free access to God. You can go to God at any time you want. You can go to God at any moment. You have free access to God. You are not restricted by any way. Because you are a priest of God. Now what is the responsibility of a priest? A priest will take the burdens or cares of people to God and bring the comfort of God to the people. A priest has to do with people. So dear brothers and sisters, this is a little hard topic for me to convey to you. God has made you a king. God has made you a priest. And when God makes you a priest, you are the representative of God in a, to your people to the people whom you meet. You meet a person at office who is discouraged, who does not know what to do, who do not know where to go. 
he's confused, his boss has just scolded him. And you see this person, you are the priest to bring comfort to that person. Because God wants you to be a priest. When you come home, your spouse is discouraged, fatigued. He or she they do not know what to do, confused and, and grappling with the problem. You are the priest to bring relief for the, your spouse in that situation. You go to a place, there is a person sick. You are the priest to bring healing to that person. Because God wants you to be a priest. You are appointed as a priest so you can do priestly work in the lives of people wherever you go. Right. Now, now after having described all that, this comes to the... You may ask Jehan, how am I going to be a priest? And how am I going to be a king? This is just a description. Did you understand who a king is? Okay, you understood? Anybody didn't understand? Anybody, had, did you understand who is a priest? Okay, so now we'll come to the points, practical points, how you are to become a priest and a king. Being a king and a priest to God will bring about the ultimate success of your life. Because God wants to display His nature in you. Now one of the things that kings do not do is that kings do not beg. Now repeat with me, kings do not beg. Have you found in your Christian life that you have got used to a life of begging. Do you have the attitude of a pauper? When we go to work sometimes we beg people. When we are at home we beg people, beg our home members. When we come to church we beg them. And when we come to God we beg Him. And sometimes it is very evident you have a call and you say Lord, please, 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 please heal me. Lord, please, 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 please provide for me. Lord, if you do this, I will do this. That's a mindset of a pauper. That is a mindset of a beggar. Now repeat with me, kings do not beg. We must recognize the authority God has given you and I. If you are faced with a sickness, you must be able to tell the sickness, in Jesus' name, fever, I command you to go out. If you are having financial difficulties, you should be able to speak to your problem and say, hey, business, come now into my life. Because God is not going to make you a king. He has already made you a king. If you wait till you grow up to say, when I grow up as a, in, in Christ, I, then I will command, you will never achieve it. God doesn't want you to beg. We need to come out of that mindset When you have the attitude of begging, you will find out that it will limit you of your blessings that you can freely enjoy in knowing God. Now there was some time uh, a lady who just read from scripture, if you, look in, uh, if you say to this mountain, be uprooted and be thrown into the sea, it shall obey you. So this lady came and in the night opened the window. In the moonlight she can barely see the mountain. And she said, Hey, in Jesus' name, I ask you to uproot and be thrown into the sea. 
and she went to sleep. Early next morning, when the sunrise was coming, uh, uh, she at sunrise opened the door and said, "I knew this. I knew this that the mountain will be still be there. I knew this." Brothers and sisters in Christ, our prayers sometimes are not answered because we do not expect an answer. When you pray for business to improve, you, you don't expect in your heart for it to improve. Sometimes we pray for the president, Lord give him wisdom, Lord give him understanding. In the morning we pray that and the end we say, hey what a foolish man he is. Those prayers are not answered because you do not expect an answer. You say for financial prosperity and you go and say, hey I am a broke man, I have no hope. Please understand, I am telling it in the most polite way, those prayers are not answered because you don't expect an answer. God is so true, dear brothers and, and sisters. I, I told you that a voice of command and authority is in the power of a, a voice of command is, is there in a king. And God wants you to be a king. What prevents you from being a king is when you magnify your problem more than your understanding of God you become a pauper. When you overestimate your problem than God, you become a pauper. You do not, you are unable to exercise authority. And you go to God say, Lord, I don't know how this problem is going to help me. Please, please, please help me. That's the wrong kind of prayer. Okay, if you are a priest, But one more uh, point, another aspect of a king is a king honors people. A king honors people because he himself feels honored. If you look at royalty everywhere, when they meet people, they greet people. They know their honor because they feel honored by themselves. One very simple but profound truth. If I leave with you, when God turns up, He does not turn up on a red stallion. When God turns up, He does not turn up in a big meeting. He may sometimes, but most common way of God turning up is through his children. When you meet a child of God, treat that person with honor because God is turning up on her or on him. When your care cell leader comes to your house, treat that person with honor because God is turning up on her. God is turning up on him. When you honor God, you you see a blessing on your life because God is honored and His honor comes upon you. Dear brothers and sisters, it is time for us to get out of our beggarly and pauperly natures and step into being a king with God. It is time for us to get out of our selfish ways and become a priest of God that touches people. Now I am a doctor. I have been commissioned as a doctor. Now just imagine, I say, hey, I have got MBBS, I'm so happy, I'm qualified. But if I don't touch sick people, is there a value of me being a doctor or having MBBS? No. You may say, I am a priest, but if you don't touch people with God's goodness, 
that priesthood is not valuable because you are chosen with a purpose to touch the lives of people. If I would leave with you another secret for success,